here. I'm recognized as an applied behavioral scientist, a certified knowledge manager, a competent Toastmaster, a podcaster, author, and an Invite Change graduate. I'm honored by that, but what many people don't know is that I've gone through most of my life feeling invisible because as a child, that was my strategy for overcoming the sexual abuse that was in our home. It, it made me feel safe. And um, my name is Sharon Rolf, and I've overcome some difficult things, come out on the other side successfully, and I want to give you the benefit of things I've learned. Now, change and transitions like retirement can be exciting and adventure or something like a blind date, not knowing exactly what you're going to get and yet being committed to the journey. So where we're starting from today, what about your job requires you to function from your head or your heart? Uh, what's the ratio of how much you use your head and your heart in your current job? Think of that, what that ratio is. So thinking about return, uh, transitions, my intent is to set you up to have confidence, excitement, smiles, curiosity, freedom, inspiration, and aspiration in retirement. And I'm going to share some stories of possibilities and what to do to make your retirement marvelous. So the benefit uh, you'll get from this session is learning to live from your heart since retirement is your time to shine. Now, we all know people who are retired. Should anyone you know seem to be struggling since retiring after today, you'll be able to give them a new perspective on what's possible. Perhaps help them dust off that old dream or remember what made them happy or makes them happy. I'm a retirement and spark coach, behavioral scientist, and I'm 74. Now, my story about feeling invisible is pretty common for middle kids. Um, can, can you relate to that? Yeah, because I chose a regular career, uh, you know, doing, working diligently and responsibly and reliably. Uh, as the culture was then to fit in, it had little to do with my potential. Yeah, over time, I did develop my creativity secretly and did a bit of speaking. And when I retired, a, a piece of advice I followed immediately was the decision to have something else to go to. And in my case, it was the coaching program. Yet, I soon faced a di transition dilemma when I started wondering, how do I know if I'm being productive? Well, the answer to that was started from, uh, I came back from a um, class lunch break one day and I slapped the table and I stopped my foot and I said, it's not okay to be invisible. I shocked myself. Where did that come from? Now, I've always been single without kids or family close by. And my retirement is quite different. But I was also different in my family because I was a lifelong learner and paid my way through college and uh, including nights and weekends and even a vacation. And um, and it took me through the difficult recovery uh, from the sexual abuse. So uh, my retirement planning, you know, in the days that I was getting ready to retire was just financial. And now there's ways of uh, baby boomers are putting a, a um, demanding from uh, the plan, the financial people more help with retirement in that transition and it's now being called holistic retirement planning. And I hope you get a chance to get that kind of coaching because it can be critical and make uh, a huge difference in your 
the support of the decisions you need to make in planning a future that works for you. Now, there are so many positive feelings that our jobs provide us with, a sense of vibrancy and aliveness and being engaged and valuable, solving problems alone or with teammates. And, you know, you have a, a tribe of people you go to meetings with or colleagues that help you thrive and that whole sense of accomplishment that brings so much satisfaction. Well, when you walk out the door in retirement, that's all gone. There's no more uh, emotional reflect. I, I want to help you reflect emotionally on your job because it's all gone. And that transition need, can start a downhill slide into isolation, depression, and maybe even addiction if not checked. Having all this time freedom can be a burden. And especially after your spouse dies. Now, the myth that went around my job before I retired was that um, you die within three years of retiring. Uh, that just hit me in my heart. And um, I knew I wanted to help solve that problem and be a supportive guide on your journey to retirement. So uh, in addition to the emotional trans transition is this new term that encompasses more uh, uh, topics in the retirement planning. And it's defined by four pillars that can well, um, created. And um, he kind of explains that Changes in one pillar can affect the other pillars. And the four, four pillars are health and family and purpose and, and finances. So our physical health, the, the shape or the status of our health when we retire is one thing. But your hearing and your, and your um, eyesight and your balance and your strength all are changing as we age. So that needs to be uh, considered and maybe even have somebody that holds you accountable for those changes and helps you deal with them honestly. You know, like when to give up your keys for driving, for example. Um, your family pillar includes the transitions of kids moving away or grandkids coming along and growing up and needing help or dying that can change our plans in so many ways. How much and what kind of help do you, are you willing to commit to providing when you're retired? Like caregiving, like finances. Now the purpose pillar is about finding a new purpose. And this is especially if your purpose was your job or your service, what will it be now? Often it becomes our grandkids, right? But if you're distant from your grandkids or estranged from them, that can be very difficult. And be aware that 19% of us never had kids. Um, so, uh, people without kids are seriously needing a new purpose. And this is 